What's poppin' y'all? Today we're doing something a little bit different and we're gonna do an anti-haul video. You're probably gonna see these more often than actual haul videos on here uh, cause I ain't got it like that, okay? So I actually have myself a little outline. Your girl is about to be professional today. I'm not about to ramble. What you doing right now though? Um, so first we wanna start off with some tips for staying strong. Get off YouTube. I did that for a few months and when you're not seeing everybody's monthly favorites and all of their hauls, like it's out of sight, out of mind. I went months without stalking Sephora and being on YouTube, having FOMO, feeling like I need every product they're talking about. Um, so unsubscribe if you need to. I definitely did that to a couple people and I'm better off for it. My next bit of advice is just chill, breathe. You're not gonna die if you don't have this product. It is still going to be here tomorrow, unless it's limited edition. And sometimes even if it is limited edition, it's still going to be there. Also be careful with those limited edition scams. Um, kind of know the culture of the company you're dealing with. Like when Anastasia says limited edition, you know they mean it. When Becca says limited edition, well, let's get on to the actual anti-haul. Today we're just focusing on eyes uh, because I recorded this video already and it was 30 minutes long so I had to take a lot of crap out. And we're gonna be talking really just about palettes because that is really hard for me to step away from. It's easy to justify buying like a $6, a $10 liquid lipstick, but spending $50 on an eyeshadow palette, let me help you. Help me help you. I'm helping myself because I want some of these. Um, the first one we're going to get into, and these are organized from hell no, don't want it, don't need it, to slick, I kind of want this, down to you might see me with this in a few months, don't snatch me for it. But the first one is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. I've never really cared for any of Too Faced products. Um, I they're just not really appealing to me whether it's the packaging which is kind of cutesy but once you look at the actual shadows in the pan I don't find them that appealing I don't find them inspirational at all they just look really boring to me furthermore with this palette the only shades that really stand out are just peachy and candied peach but I don't even know how they would like show up on darker skin um, I'm actually going to try to up my videography skills and insert some stills of um, swatches. And I was particularly looking at Style and Beauty Doc's blog where she swatched a couple of these like White Peach, Peaches and Cream, Georgia. It was like 50 Shades of Ash. Um, I've seen some gorgeous looks on YouTube, particularly from our less melanated friends. Um... <laughs> but I don't really know how that's going to look on my skin tone. Next, we're moving on to the Too Faced and Kat Von D uh, Better Together palette. Better never, no, thank you. Here we go again with Too Faced. Um, their side of the palette looks boring as fuck. Um, I don't really care for the packaging of this. It's cute, I like the magnet, I think it's a cute concept but a heart, that heart shape just seems really cumbersome. Um, that, getting back to the Too Faced side of it, that pink looks super ashy. Um, and I've seen reviews where people are like, yeah, the quality is just not there either. I've heard the Kat Von D side is awesome. As usual, I'm really interested in that gray and that red shade but I don't need another matte black. I don't need another matte white. I don't need another champagne color. They could have cut that palette off after a Swoon and Darling and it would have been a cute quad and that was it. Like I really don't need all that extra crap. Sorry. Next is another from your girl Kat Von D. I swear like no shade. I don't have it out for her. I'm wearing her liquid lip right now and the shit is popping. But uh, let's talk about this shade and light palette because I'm shading you because this shit is too light. Do you feel me? Um, just looking at it, it's totally like uninspiring. I'm really confused 
frankly, about the hype. Um, maybe it's because, again, not many women of color are hyping it up. Um, I feel like it's good for maybe like a makeup artist or somebody who's building their collection and they know that they just want those plain ass neutrals like that's all that you want but then I'm like buy a naked basics palette like it's the same damn thing it looks like to me um and personally I do prefer something more like the naked palette because you do have at least a few shimmers in there so if you want to do something a little more dramatic you have that I really don't think this palette is for dark skin because if you look at swatches of like particularly Lazarus, Lytus, Samael, Salios, Succubus, Mm -hmm. Ludwin isn't that bad because at least it has like some peachy tones to it but the rest of these girls somebody find out where Pikachu is because I'm only seeing Ash right now um I do want to try something from Kat Von D because I've heard that the quality of her shadows is amazeballs but it's just not gonna be this one like this is a no for me dog no. Hey, so I apologize, but this next palette was released after I had already recorded this video, but I could not resist the urge to come and let you see just how trash it is, and that is the Pastel Goth palette from Kat Von D. Kitty Cat, baby girl, what's happening with these palettes? Um, this palette is definitely not for brown skin. I don't really know what skin this is for because the quality just is not there as you can see from this swatch that I am inserting. It is from an Instagram reviewer named Ripley. Check her out. I was really interested in this at first because I thought the pastel concept was really cool um, and I hadn't really seen anything like it yet. However, I just feel like this is a miss and this is another one that is limited edition. Next is one that I really did want to like, and that is the Lorac Pro 3. I have the OG and I rock with it heavy. I plan to get the two in the future. So when I saw the three, first I didn't even know they released it. And then I was like, okay, okay. Like just looking at it, some of them like Amethyst and Kitty Cat really pop out to me. But then you give it a closer look and you see like, there's a shade in the third called light pewter that kind of looks like pewter in the first one. Jet black looks like black. Cool taupe looks like taupe but ashier. We don't need more ash. Uh, dark brown looks like sable. And on top of that, I have seen reviews that say the quality is just not there. So that's really disappointing to hear. If you don't have the original Lorac Pro palette and you know that you're going to want something more neutral, I would say, okay, go for it. Especially if you can go into stores and swatch it and know that you like the quality. But personally, I like how the Lorac Pro has that purple and the garnet and it gives you um, the option to do something more colorful and dramatic and it's not just pure neutrals. Next we're coming for your girl violet boss because she is just unnecessary now if you look at this palette like the price point is tempting because you're getting 20 shadows for 45 dollars the quality is seemingly good but when you break it down that comes out to just about two dollars per shadow and that's basically on par with morphe i'm not being bougie like i have morphe shadows that cost like 250 a piece and the pigmentation is great i like them but the thing is morphe is not out here charging 45 dollars for a palette if you get a morphe palette you can get 35 shadows for 23 dollars violet boss is out here charging 45 dollars for 20 shadows and for them to be two roughly two dollars each i'm wondering like how great the quality is I completely forgot that this was called the Holy Grail palette and I was like okay girl holy grail for who for why how um if you know that you are just rocking with those mandarins and cranberries and burgundies okay go for it that's your prerogative but I really feel like kind of like with the Morphe 350 how many distinct looks are you really creating with this palette where if you look at it on fleek and how you do it and tell me that's not the same shade 
Tell me transition, are you kidding me, and bestie aren't basically all the same shade. Tell me awesome sauce and chill aren't just like a degree different. I feel like they switch it up by one notch and think it's a completely different shadow and just put 50 of the same shades in one palette and think that they're doing something. Um, additionally, I kind of feel like can I really trust this company? Because if you look on their website, they say, oh, these shadows retail for 120 if they were sold separately. But when you click around their website and go to where it says single shadows, it directs you right back to the palettes. So exactly where are these being sold separately? Who is selling these separately? To whom are these being sold separately, girl? Come on. Um, and if she just like made this off the top of her head based off how much she thinks these shadows are worth, that's still bullshit. Um, additionally, they seem like one of these that get you with the whole limited edition hype. They have their drenched metal shadow palette that was a limited edition summer release, but we're now in January. So I want to know exactly when they are going to cut this release. Uh, they said, limited edition, but we want everyone to have one. Girl, do you know what limited means? Limited edition, that means not everyone can get one. Just like, just make it permanent. Just make it permanent. Now we're delving deeper into the world of burgundy. And we're doing so first with the Makeup Geek and Manny MUA palette. This is one that I initially wanted, um, mostly because I wanted to support Manny. I've kind of fallen back on that. You know, he's one of those that I had to unplug, unsubscribe from. Um, it was originally supposed to be limited edition, but it's still on their website. It's currently sold out, but it seems that they have plans to bring it back. Based off the swatches on their website, I do not believe that this is brown girl friendly. Sorry, I'm going to stop saying girl. It's not brown person friendly. Brown men can wear this too. Um, he and Jacqueline rave about beaches and cream being a great transition shade. Um, clearly not for anyone darker than like NC30. Um, I think if you're darker, maybe Sora or Frappe could work as a transition shade. But that kind of throws off the palette. Like uh, how many looks can you really create with this? You can create like a neutral angelic kind of look with the lighter colors. You can create a burgundy look and then you can create a look, a darker one centered around insomnia. I can admit I, I was really about to buy this palette for just the last row until I realized I don't need an, another dark brown, I don't need another burgundy, and I don't really need another color that looks like insomnia. I can give you some alternatives like Partridge from Colourpop or Pigeon from the Lime Crime Venus 2 palette, or Taj from Juvia's Place. Like everyone has that shade now, so it's not really special anymore. Uh, moving on, there's the Kylie Burgundy palette. I'm just gonna go ahead and say part of me is being a hater. I don't want to give her or her fucked up ass family my money. Um, looking at the palette, it's not really inspiring at all in the pan. I've seen some really cute looks with it. But then again, you can make those looks with any of these other colors. They're not special. Penny, Burgundy, and Dubai do stand out to me. But aside from that, I don't need more tan shades. I don't need another Burgundy shade, to be honest. And I don't need another brown shade. It's the same thing. Everybody has these palettes now. Um, so if you get one, you're good. Now moving on to the queen of the Burgundy palettes. And that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills modern renaissance um i'm still on the fence about this one like i hop on the fence off the fence on the fence off the fence wax on wax off um when i just look at this palette it doesn't touch my soul um it doesn't do a lot for me when i see swatches on darker skin i'm just like hmm okay but then i see looks and i'm like okay like i get like the heart eyes cartoon when it's like where where like i want you um <laughs> ultimately though uh there are only a few shades that really pop out to me and those are real gar cypress umber red ochre and venetian red um 
but those are shades that I have elsewhere such as in the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Um, now I will say I've heard that the Modern Renaissance palette has great quality shadows and luckily this is her first permanent uh, palette so it's gonna be around for a while so I mean if you see me do a video with this eventually <laughs> don't come for me too hard um, and I would say that if you're gonna get any of these burgundy palettes we just talked about this is probably the one to get because you're getting 14 good quality shades for $42 as opposed to the Manny MUA one being nine shades for 45 although admittedly those do have foiled shadows as well and the Kylie is I believe 42 or 45 and you're only getting nine shades so the Anastasia just seems like the best uh quality for your money this next one is one that I really struggle with and I need y'all's help with this this is the Dose of Colors ice cream palette now this is also limited edition. And the thing is, when Dose of Colors says limited edition, they mean limited edition. So I'm like, can you just tell me when you're about to stop selling this so I could just go ahead and know if I need to buy it or not? Um, this wasn't a clear no for me. The concept I think is pretty cute. Um, it's laid out like ice cream in case you haven't seen it. It's like some cute pastel colors. Oh, lavender honey. Um, I've seen beautiful looks with this, um, but I'm not really sure if it's brown girl friendly. I have seen some uh, ashy swatches, to be honest, TBH. Um, but then I saw some YouTubers. One is Cool and Beauty, and I will link their videos below, where I saw her video and I was like, okay, I don't need it. Um, that's no shade. Um, she looked like she knew what she was doing, and I could tell that it probably looked good on her. Um, and I think maybe her camera quality wasn't the greatest, but I kind of like that because that just seems very realistic to me. Um, and I feel like if it's popping, it's popping. And the colors really weren't popping out because when you see these bigger YouTubers, they have like these 200 watt lights. So of course these colors are going to look amazing. Of course they edit the fuck out of their videos and out of their thumbnails. So the colors are going to be vibrant AF. But it was nice seeing just like the average person and how it really looks on her. Um, but then I watched somebody else saying Beauty with Alex and her camera quality was a little bit better. But she was also lighter skin so the colors are going to show up differently on her. So I'm still kind of like on the fence about it. I would really only be buying it because it's limited edition. And for a few shades like Blueberry Swirl, Bubblegum, Mint Chip and of course lavender honey it's mainly that one and i cannot buy an eyeshadow palette for one shade i'm really over like the golds that are in it the bronzes the browns don't need that um banana split ew that yellow gold looks so out of place and i feel like it could have been a matte pastel yellow but maybe that would have been chalky who knows lastly we're gonna talk about the urban decay after dark palette um, if you see me with this palette in like a year, don't say nothing. Now, I had it in my cart when I was trying to make VIB Rouge and I had to let it go because I realized I was just spending money to spend money. It's not a standalone palette. Um, there are no transition shades. I don't really need that. I think I'm also at the point in my collection where it's time for me to start buying single shadows, but that means I have to buy a Z palette. Um, because I'm really just going to be repeating colors if I keep buying palettes. Um, I've watched a lot of tutorials. The swatches look great. People seem to love the quality. I really only bring it up to mention, A, don't get caught with packaging. Don't let them get you caught up, girl. Like, it's okay to let it go. Don't pick it up just because the shit is pretty. Um, and also to mention the VIB Rouge Dilemma, where just because maybe you can buy something or you think there's a reason to buy something isn't really a good reason to buy it. But yeah, I love these duochromes. I love the top row of it. But I actually listened to myself and I didn't spend unnecessary money. And it's going to be here in six months and maybe I will buy it in six months um that is all i hope i helped you we fall down but we get up 
and we're gonna stay strong together and keep our money in our pockets. That's all.